In this video, we will study the pathological features of Graves' disease, which is very important from exam point of view. So on gross specimen, thyroid gland in Graves' disease is diffusely and symmetrically enlarged. And you have to keep this point in mind because it differentiates Graves' disease from thyroid neoplasms. You know that in thyroid neoplasms, the enlargement of thyroid gland will be in form of nodules. But in Graves' disease, the enlargement is not in form of nodules. Rather, it is diffuse and symmetric, affecting the whole of thyroid gland. Now, for microscopic features of Graves' disease, the keywords to remember are Immune system stimulates thyroid to grow and become active. You know that this is the pathophysiology behind this disease, that immune system stimulates thyroid to grow and become active. The first keyword here is immune system, which appears as lymphocytic infiltrates and these lymphocytes are mainly T lymphocytes. So you see lymphocytes and these lymphocytes also form germinal center. This means that these lymphocytes form follicular aggregates and these follicular aggregates show a germinal center. So you see lymphocytic infiltrates in the form of follicles and these follicles also form germinal center. These germinal centers are an indicator of their proliferation. The second keyword you can see is stimulates thyroid to grow. So what happens is that the follicular cells increase both in size and quantity. When they increase in size, they change from small cuboidal cells to tall columnar cells. And when these follicular cells increase in number, the result is crowding of cells which distort the rounded structure of follicles into follicles with finger-like projections that are called papilla. So you can see papilla or finger-like projections. Now here comes the important point of distinction between papilla that forms in Graves' disease and papilla of papillary carcinoma of thyroid. The difference is that the papilla and Graves' disease are just formed due to crowding of cells. So these papilla are not true papilla and they lack fibrovascular cores. Conversely, the papilla and papillary carcinoma of thyroid are true papilla and they are well equipped with fibrovascular cores. So papilla of Graves' disease do not contain fibrovascular tissue inside their cores. Now the third keyword says that immune system stimulates the thyroid to become active. So you can clearly imagine that active cells need to synthesize a lot of hormone and in order to synthesize a lot of hormone, the follicular cells ingest a lot of colloid by endocytosis because you know that thyroid hormones are made from colloid. So in order to make a lot of thyroid hormone, colloid needs to be ingested. This ingestion of colloid makes the colloid pale with scalloped margin. So you see pale colloid with scalloped margins. Now let's summarize all the microscopic features in Graves' disease. In Graves' disease, you see lymphocytic infiltrates that form germinal centers. You see tall columnar cells and you see crowding of cells causing fo formation of papilla. And you see colloid is pale with scalloped margins. This concludes our discussion on pathological features of Graves' disease.